The noble truth of the origin of suffering is this. It is this thirst or craving. The word in Pali, tanha. Tanha, attachment, desire, um, wanting, wanting things, wanting, wanting, wanting. If you uh, think about the senses, we are always wanting. Each sense seeks out pleasant experiences. The, seek, the search for sense pleasures. We want to see pleasant sights. We want to hear pleasant sounds. Hear not only sight, not only see and hear, but also taste, touch, smell, and thought. All want pleasant experiences. There's this craving, this thirst. But this thirst can never be satisfied. As soon as we have one enjoyable experience, either we want to hold on to it and stop it going away, but it changes, or we then look for another enjoyable experience. The problem is that these sense pleasures can never be fully satisfied. There will always be something else that we want. Once you've bought yourself an ancient, beat-up old car, you then say, yeah, but actually what I'd like is something a bit newer. So you want something else. The, the, the Buddha said, it, it is like pouring water into the ocean. The ocean will never overflow. It's like putting fuel on the fire. The fire will never say, okay, fine, I'm, I'm satisfied, stop, that's enough. They always want more. And we can never satisfy this. So if you're going to go around trying to satisfy all of your sense desires all of the time, you're setting yourself an impossible goal. You can't do that. But this is what drives on a lot of our life, the, the unceasing quest for sense pleasures. But remember, I said, when the, before the Buddha taught, he hesitated. He said, this is a world devoted to sense pleasures. And the Buddha's teaching is patisotagami, going against the stream. So one form of tanha is what we call karma tanha. There are two different words that are a little bit similar. There's K-A-M-A, -A, which is senses, sense desires. But there's also, you've heard the word kama, or in um, Sanskrit, karma. That means action. We're not talking about that here. We're talking about K-A-M-A, -A, kama, tanha, desire for sense pleasures. That's one form of tanha. Second form of tanha is called bhava. Tanha. Bhava means to become, to continue. This means we want, oh, sorry, I should also say on the subject of karma tanha. Uh, it's not only material things that we have desire for, we also desire popularity, power, fame, reputation, all sorts of non-material things can also go in the form of karma. Um, then bhava, bhava, to continue, to become something other than what we already are.
this in the extreme form is the desire for life to continue. We don't want our life to end. We want it to go on and on and on. And we even have the hope, or some people have the hope, that when this particular life ends, there will be another life. My soul will continue on into some other existence. I will go to heaven. That is bhava tanha. And the opposite of bhava tanha is vi bhava tanha, vi i. Vi bhava tanha, which is the desire not to go on, not to continue. Annihilationism. I hope that when I die, nothing goes on. That's the end. It can also cause people, unfortunately, to terminate their own life. They don't want the life to go on. I've had enough. I'm fed up. I'm going to kill myself. That is the more extreme form of vibhava tanha. So, this is what the Buddha says is the origin of Dukkha. Desire. It is this thirst or craving which produces re-existence and re-becoming. That is bhava, tanga. This, in fact, is what drives forward all of the natural world. Every creature has the, has the inclination, has the desire for continuity. No, or at least almost all beings don't want to die. Furthermore, this is what drives the whole process of reproduction. Continuity. Going on. And it's bound up with passionate greed. It finds fresh delight now, here, and now there, namely, and these are the three kinds, thirst for sense pleasures, thirst for existence and re-becoming, and thirst for non-existence, or self-annihilation. So these are the first two truths. And If you look a little bit further down, beyond halfway, there's a paragraph that begins, this is the noble truth of suffering, dukkha. Such was the vision, the knowledge, the wisdom, the science, the light that arose in me with regard to things not heard before. This is the Buddha saying this is something he discovered. This suffering as a noble truth should be fully understood. With the first noble truth, our task is to understand it. So reflect on it. Look in yourself, look around the world outside and see whether it is true that there is dukkha. Even if you yourself are doing okay, if you look around at other people, there are lots of other people who are not doing okay. So you can verify this truth on the basis of your own experience. You're not asked to believe it, you're asked to understand it. Test it. Look at it. Is it true, based on what you can see? And if you do see this, that is a very powerful stimulus to help us develop a very important quality which the Buddha highly recommended, and that is compassion. 
you yourself do not like to experience suffering. And you see other people experience suffering, and they, just like you, do not like to experience suffering. So when you realize that we are all in the same boat together, all of us, to a greater or lesser extent, are experiencing dukkha, then we can feel compassion. That's the basis for this very valuable quality to look around and understand the nature of existence. The Buddha doesn't phrase this noble truth by saying, you, five men, you are suffering. That would be to personalize it. He says that this is a truth, the truth of suffering. So it's, it's universally applicable. And then if you look at the, the last paragraph, this is the noble truth of the origin of suffering. Such was the vision this origin of suffering as a noble truth should be abandoned. So the first noble truth, we have to understand it. Second noble truth, tanha, is to be abandoned. That is the, the job to be done with the second of these truths. First one, understand it. Second one, abandon it. So, this evening has been a lot of talk about unhappiness and misery. And some people, because they've misunderstood the Buddha's teachings, say that Buddhism is a very gloomy, pessimistic religion. <coughs> that all the Buddhists talk about the whole time is suffering, 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 suffering. But they have forgotten that there are four noble truths, not just two. And the Buddha said all four should be considered together. In fact, he said, he who sees suffering sees the origin of suffering, sees the cessation of suffering, and sees the path to the cessation of suffering. So we've got the bad news out of the way now. Next week, better news. Truth number three, and eventually, Truth number four. We've turned the corner. <coughs> the noble truth of the origin of suffering is this. It is this thirst or craving. The word in Pali, tanha. Tanha, attachment. Desire. The problem is that these sense pleasures can never be fully satisfied. There will always be something else that we want. Once you've bought yourself an ancient, beat-up old car, you then say, yeah, but actually what I'd like is something a bit newer. So you want something higher. Um, wanting, wanting things, wanting, wanting, wanting. If you uh, think about the senses, we are always wanting. Each sense seeks out pleasant experiences. The, seek, the search for sense pleasures. We want to see pleasant sights. We want to hear pleasant sounds. Hear not only sights, not only see and hear, but also taste, touch, smell, and thought. We all want pleasant experiences. There's this craving, this thirst. But this thirst can never be satisfied. As soon as we have one enjoyable experience, either we want to hold on to it and stop it going away, but it changes, or we then look for another 
enjoyable experience.